have you been naughty or nice? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Is this the funniest thing ever? <laughs> I made this little beard, and if you want the pattern, it's super easy. It is, you can either hook it on your hat with buttons, or you can hook it on your ears. That's my daughter's pattern. She calls it Fear the Beard. <clears throat> because it was back when they were watching the Oklahoma Thunder and one of the gentlemen who was a basketball player always had a nice long beard and I so I just made it in white <clears throat> I thought it would be so funny <laughs> anyway that was fun so have you been naughty or nice is Santa going to bring you what you want for Christmas <laughs> well this is Sarah here and welcome to my live video chat. I'm so glad you're here today. Now remember, this is our last video chat for 2017. It sounds really sad, but really, I'm not going to do one next week because we're going to have family in. My father-in-law's coming for a stay for Christmas, and so we're not going to have a live video chat next week. But right after New Year's, in the next year we'll start up with some of our new stuff now if you remember i had talked previously about starting some new crochet lessons i have 12 lessons written out and it's just going to be called back to the crochet basics and we're going to start right from the very beginning with chaining and lots of simple things and on each video there'll be a project that you can make with what we learned that day. So I think you're really going to like that. We're still going to have our live video chats and of course lots of fun things going on through the new year. Hi Dana! Clink in! I've got my big Santa mug today and I've got my Santa hat on and my Santa sweater and I'm hoping I've been nice but I think I might have been naughty. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of fun things to talk about today. <clears throat> I'm going to toss those down there. And we have a lot of new things going on and just getting ready for the new year. And one of the questions that I got um, about two weeks ago is, she just sent me an email and she said, what's the deal with the yarn dye lots? I don't understand. How come some yarns have dye lots and some don't? How come some it matters and some yarns it doesn't? What's going on with the yarn labels? And she was really, really frustrated. And I can understand that because if you don't understand how the dye lot system works, you won't understand what it means. So first of all, let's talk about what is a, a yarn dye lot. And so basically, let me pop you down here to this other screen. I tried to find one that didn't have a glare on it. All my ones with white labels had a glare. So I grabbed this one. It's gray. This is red. I mean, I'm sorry. This is Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. And if you'll notice, there's a number there. And what happens is each batch of yarn that's made from the same a uh, batch of yarn is given the same number. So if you're going to make a blanket or something where you're going to need more than one of the skeins or skeins of yarn or balls or hanks or whatever you're purchasing in, make sure that all the ones that you purchase have this same dye lot. That's what a yarn dye lot is. You'll usually find it on the same label or near the, the area where you'll have your UPC number. Now this one's from Hobby Lobby where they don't have UPC numbers. <clears throat> so it's just right there. On your Red Heart Super Saver and most of your other yarns, there's a white label and then there'll usually be the UPC label and then it'll say lot number or you'll just see a number. And those are very important because if you're making a large project, you want to make sure that all the yarn that you purchase for that project is from the same dye lot number. And because they can vary in shades, even just a tiny bit lighter or darker can change your project. All right, so let's talk about why do some of them have 
yarn dye lot numbers and some yarns do not. And the way that works is a lot of acrylic yarn manufacturers will add the colors in while they're making the fiber because you know acrylic is not a natural fiber like wool or cotton is. And so when they're making the acrylic yarn during the process of making it into a fiber, they will add the colors in then, and then it will be spun into yarn. And you usually get a more uh, constant color when it's an acrylic yarn that's made that way. Red Heart, Lion Brand, most of the big manufacturers add the color in during the fiber making process. Because remember, acrylic yarn is pretty much just like a spun plastic. And so um, that's why it burns when you get it too hot. Um, or, or sometimes if you leave it in the dryer too long, it can burn as well. And so what they do is when they're spinning those fibers into a string, that's when the color is added for acrylic yarns. And so that's why a lot of times with your acrylic yarns, you won't get a dye lot number on your yarn. Now, the other way it's done is with your wools and your cottons, your alpacas, and some of those, they spin it into the yarn, and then once it's processed into that yarn, it's put in vats of dye. And even though they may do the chemicals of the dye exactly the same recipe, the yarn may not absorb it the same, or it may not, you know, be exactly the same, even though it looks the same and so you may get shades lighter or darker when you're using cotton or wool or alpaca or some of those so basically uh, just to kind of break it down when you're buying acrylic yarn the color is put in during the process of making it into a fiber because acrylic is not a natural fiber but when they're you're they're adding the color to cottons and wools and those that are natural fibers, the color or the dye is added after the process of spinning it into a yarn. And it's put in vats and it's, <clears throat> it's boiled and boiled and boiled until it's as white and clean as it can be. And then it's added, the dyes are added, and that's when the color is put in. And so even, like I said, even though the recipe for the dye may be exactly the same for every single vat, that doesn't mean that the yarn's going to absorb it the same or that it's going to be the same color and you may get shade variations. So that's why, let me go back to the top cam again. <clears throat> that's why this yarn lot number is very important. Now when you're buying acrylic, still look for that y yarn uh, number and make sure that all the, all the yarn, uh, whether it's balls or shanks or whatever, it all have the same lot number. Um, for the most part, when you're buying acrylic and it's and it's processed where the colors put it put in during the fiber uh, portion of it before it's spun into yarn, you're really going to get a, a true color and you probably won't have any variation in your colors. But still look for that yarn dye lot number because it's really frustrating to be in the middle of a project. And then you look down and it's just off by a shade, darker or lighter, especially if it's a gift. Okay, so whether you're buying acrylic or a natural fiber like wool or cotton, always check for that lot number. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the, the lot number is just the group of yarn that was processed using that same color process. Um, all the ones that are done natural fibers when they're in the vat of dye, those are all given the same number so that you know all those were done at the same time and all those colors should be the same. And it's the same thing with acrylic. It's just like I said, oops, almost knocked my coffee cup over. That would have been a nightmare. <laughs> but <coughs> I'm still fighting off a little bit of a cold, so hopefully I won't cough too much. Um, I'm not contagious. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can't get it through the video. <laughs> it's just a little sinus cold. Anyway, back to what we were discussing. When the color is put in acrylic yarn, it's done during when it's spun into the fiber process. When it's a natural fiber like cotton 
or wool. It's put in after it's spun into the yarn and made into yarn and then put in a vat. And that's why there's a difference. Sometimes your acrylic yarn won't have that yarn fiber number and sometimes it will. Always look for it though because um, you want your projects to be as pretty as they can be and if you're going to work really hard on something you want it to be gorgeous, right? And especially if you're giving it as a gift. And so I hope that answered that question. I see some of you popped in. Hello Gina and Sandra. I'm so glad you're here. I've got my big Santa cup today. I'm needing a big cup of coffee today. Got a scratchy throat. You know, a time of the year. I was so excited this morning when I saw the news. We're going to get snow on Thursday. And then it said snow on Saturday and possibly Sunday. I'm so excited. We just might have a white Christmas. You know, I, I, when we first moved up here um, south of Denver, I just assumed I'd have a white Christmas every year. And that's not true. You know, they get the most amount of snow in January and February and March. Who knew? <laughs> so anyway... If you have any other questions about dye lots or any other questions, feel free to ask those questions or you can always email me or post them underneath the video and I'll try my best to answer your questions. And like I always say, if I don't know the answer, I'll do the best I can to find you an answer. All right, so let's talk about what's new this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Lots of fun stuff. So the... um. We did a video yesterday and I decided to make something for us to make for ourselves. And so I designed this three piece set. I just call it my spa washcloth set and you get, you make three washcloths and you can make this with, I think five ounces, two of those small, um, cotton skeins, or you can also use, I love this cotton, which is my favorite cotton and you make three. One to wash your eyes to get the makeup off your eyes. One to wash your face to get the grime of the day off. And one to wash your body. <clears throat> Make yourself a bubble bath. Grab your favorite drink and just relax. It's been a crazy couple of months getting ready for the holidays. And so now it's time for you to relax. And so I thought it would be fun to make this spa set. They do make a great gift, but you can also make them for yourself. So that happened yesterday. I put the video out there and the pattern. And then um, on Friday, <clears throat> I had a request for this one. And I, I wasn't going to do a video because I thought, oh, it's so easy. And, she, and the lady that messaged me, she said, I'm just not quite understanding how to do this. And what this is, this is my cowl. I call it my Christmas cowl of leftovers. And all I did is I used either two strands of Worcester weight number four yarn or I used one strand of Worcester weight five or one strand of Worcester weight number six. And you just put them together and you make this cowl. And it's done just a little bit different where you're going in the stitches so that it looks like knit. It makes a really thick, warm cowl. And so what I did, this is with Christmas ones, and so what I did is I made my husband one with just some leftover yarns that I had. I guess I'm going the wrong way there. There you go. So he could wear it out on the tractor when he's working out in the yard. And I did the same thing. I, I used uh, two strands of worsted weight number four or uh, one strand of five or six. Now. I um, did the video on Friday. The pattern's already been out there, but I did a video for it on Friday so you can learn how to make this super simple and warm cow. And it's really great because you can just slide it on your neck, put your coat on, and kind of tuck it in. Works great. And, um, and like I said, because of the way it's stitched, it has kind of that knit look to it. There we go. And it has a cool way, I thought it was so neat, the way it kind of slants. I love that because you're doing it in a continuous round, and so it kind of makes a little bit of a slant, and I really like that. So anyway, it's a way to make a nice, really warm cowl for anybody with your leftover yarns. You need a gift at the last minute, grab those leftover balls of yarn and whip one of these up. You can do that in about an hour. It's super easy. So anyway, we did that on Friday, and then I have one coming out tomorrow, a super simple one. And what it is, is these little bags like this. And you just put your gift cards in them. And I just did some freehand embroidery and added some buttons. Here's one I wrote joy on. This one is um, 
a sparkle blue and I just wrote joy on there but I put what am I doing <laughs> I put a button for the O and then this one I had a little fun with <laughs> I wrote the word coal and I added the dog paw but these are great if you want to give someone a gift card for Christmas and you feel like oh I don't just want to hand it to them in an envelope you can make a little bag and stick it in there and they can always use this for little trinkets later if they want to. It makes a really nice American girl sized purse. <laughs> and it's just a simple little pattern. And well, I'm going to do the video tomorrow just for fun for our last Christmas video. You know, um, this is our, like I said, our last um, video, live video for 2017. Can you believe this year's gone by so fast? I uh, <clears throat> had a lot of things happen in this year and I and I, I uh, have always tried to be joyful and kind to other people and I hope that uh, when you're making out your uh, New Year's resolutions or whatever you call them, I don't really call them that, I just kind of jot down some things that I want to change you know, the number one is always lose 10 pounds, and I keep losing that same 10 pounds, and it keeps coming back. <laughs> but I also have, you know, um, last year I decided that I was going to, one of my things I was going to do is try to be kind to unkind people. And sometimes it's a challenge, And I, but I really tried. My uh, mom used to call them sandpaper people because they always rub you the wrong way. <laughs> But there's, you know, there's some people that just are just grumpy and they, I don't think they mean to. Sometimes they don't know how they sound, you know. I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. And so through the year, I really worked hard. I didn't always succeed, you know, because it's kind of hard sometimes. But I did try really hard to be kind and loving to those who need it most. And I think that those who are grumpy, I think a lot of times maybe they're not really meaning to be grumpy. They're just sad. And so if you can reach out and be kind to people, it makes all the difference in the world. And not just to you, I mean, not just to them, but to you too. Because if you choose to be joyful, then the joy rubs off. And um, I always try to play this silly little game. When I'm in the store like Walmart or we have a big King Super and Target and Kohl's or wherever I'm at, I always look around while I'm shopping. And if I see someone that looks sad, I just say, good morning or Merry Christmas, or Happy Holidays, or having fun shopping, you know, and, and, and flash them a smile. I'm telling you, smiles are something you can always give to brighten someone's day. They cost you nothing, but they're priceless. And so that's kind of what I want to leave with you today. I didn't want to make our video today really, really long. I just wanted to make sure that I was able to wish you all Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and that I will see you next year be looking for all the new stuff we have going on um, remember we're going to start the um, back to crochet basics and then we're still going to have our live videos each week <clears throat> and then we're also going to still have lots of uh, video tutorials and I'm hoping that 2018 will be a fun and joyous year for everyone see you next year Thank you.